Alabama. Right. 
All right, good morning, everyone. Good morning and welcome. Uh, we are glad you're here. Today is July the 31st, and we have gathered today to worship. And uh, this morning, let's begin with scripture as the psalmist writes in Psalm 63. My God, you are my God. Earnestly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you as in a dry and weary land where there is no water. So I have looked upon you in the sanctuary, beholding your power and glory, because your steadfast love is better than life. My lips will praise you. So I bless you as long as I live. In your name, I will lift up my hands. This morning, will you join us and stand? And let's praise the name of our God with our lips. Let's sing.
This time our ushers are come forward. You may be seated as we get morning, uh, get ready to receive the morning tithes and offerings. Our deacon of the week, Johnny Long, will come up and pray for the offering. Brother Johnny. Good morning. Y'all have a good week. Let's give thanks to God for everything that He has given us. It was a challenge in Sunday school that all of us this week, each morning, is going to wake up give God thanks for something he's done in our lives so we have many things to thankful be thankful for correct mm-hmm. yeah let me read you uh, one of my favorite verses uh, it's in John it's John uh, chapter 1 it said in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God he was in the beginning with God all things were made through him and without him nothing was made that was made in him was life and the life was the light of men and the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. Let's go to our Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you so much for this day, the things that you have given us, the things that you had made for us. Jesus, we want to thank you so much for reaching out and and touching our hearts and bringing us this salvation that you have given us, the mercy and the grace that you put upon us. Father, just overwhelms our hearts with joy. Lord, we have you to come to. We have you to deal with our problems our joys, our happiness, our sorrows. Father, you are our God. You're our Father who loves us dearly. And Lord, we thank you so much for the many things that you have given us. And as we go through this week, Lord, give us the courage to witness to those who do not know you and share your name. And Father, as we go through this week too, Father, we ask that you be with those who are are, uh, in need, uh, those who are hurt, those who have uh, dealing with suffering of illnesses. Father, we ask that it be your will that you will heal them. And Father, we thank you so much for the rain that you gave us this week, that you have healed this land, and you have taken care of what the farmers need each and every day, Father, is that rain. And we thank you for taking care of the animals and the people and this planet, Lord, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.
right. Hey, let's start off this morning and let's have some fun. Let's ask all of our children, if you're in the room, there's no children's church today. But I want to start, if you're a child, will you come up here and sit on the steps this morning? If you're a child, come up front, sit on the steps. All the, ch- all the kids, come on up. David Campbell, that was that you getting up and coming down to? <laughs> you're welcome to, brother. All right, we've got more children. What about students? Students, come on up. Come on up. Sit up here at the front, too. Put you guys on the spot. There we go. All right. Sit as well as you can. You guys kind of squeeze in together. There we go. There we go. Big group, right? Big group. All right. Now, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys something that's kind of valuable to me, all right? Uh, For the students who went to camp, you know who my favorite basketball team is, right? Who's my favorite basketball team? Spurs, all right? Not the Lakers. Not the Lakers. (laughs) All right. San Antonio Spurs. Well, I have a shirt. I'm going to show it to the rest of the congregation here first. And this shirt is valuable to me. Okay, the shirt is valuable to me, but let me explain why. The shirt is not valuable because of the team name that's on the shirt. The shirt is valuable to me because of what's written on the shirt. And if you notice, there's a lot of different signatures and names on the shirt. Now, just for clarification, this is not the actual team signature, okay? Uh, These are names of children from the previous church where, where I came from. So before I started serving here as pastor, I served at a church in Virginia as children's pastor. So uh, once, once uh, God called me here to this church, I think it was like the last week or so, the children at that church bought this shirt for me, and they, all of the children, or at least a lot of them, signed their names to the shirt. So again, it's not valuable because of the team name, but it's valuable because of the names of all of the children that are written on this shirt. Now, you may think, wow, Pastor Drake, really, you got us up front to show us this old dirty shirt that's wrinkled and armpit stains on it and stuff, right? Ugh, right? Now, I know some things that maybe are valuable to me, maybe are not valuable to you, and maybe things that are valuable to you are maybe aren't as valuable to me. Now, again, today there's no children's church. So this means all of our children will be in the service. All of the youth, you're going to remain in the service just like you always do every Sunday. And what you're going to do is, in a few minutes, I'm going to dismiss you. You'll go back to your seat, and you're going to hear a sermon. A sermon is where I typically stand up at the front, or Mr. Andy, or Mr. Doug, or Mr. Guy. Someone will stand up at the front, and they'll read Bible verses from the Bible, and then they'll talk about those Bible verses. They'll talk about what these Bible verses mean. Uh, They'll talk about what you can learn about God or how you can live for God. So this is what's getting ready to happen. And I know sometimes when you're sitting in a service, when there's no children's church, maybe you're thinking, oh, this is is a time for grown-ups. This is a time for adults. And maybe you don't feel valuable. But what we're going to read today in the book of the Bible called Ephesians, it's written specifically for you. Now, for Paul, the author, to actually take time to write this shows that you are valuable. The fact that God, speaking through Paul, For Paul to write this from God shows that to God you are valuable. 
And today, I've got you up front here because I want you all to know that you are valuable. You are significant. You're important to me. You're important to this church. You're important to God. Okay? So I want you to know that before I dismiss you. Now, once I get finished preaching, once I get finished with the sermon, I'll give an opportunity for you and for all of the adults to pray. It's called an invitation. And if something I said today, maybe you learned, maybe it's something that you're not doing well, maybe it's something that you could do a better job at, or maybe it's something you just want to pray, you are welcome to come up here at these same steps, and you are welcome to pray to God. Or you can pray at your seat, wherever you're at. Uh, But before you go back to your seat, I want to pray. So will you bow your head, close your eyes. I want to give God thanks for you, and I want to give God thanks for everybody that's here, and, uh, and then I'll dismiss you back to your seat. So let's pray. Uh, Father, I thank you so much for your many blessings. God, you, are, uh, God, you have blessed our church mightily with an amazing group of children, an amazing group of students, and God, we thank you for them. God, we thank you for all of the adults who are here today as well. God, as, as I look around the room, this is the family of God, and I thank you. God, as we prepare to read Ephesians, God, I pray today that you will open our eyes spiritually. God, help us see, help us understand more about you and how we can live for you. And God, I pray this in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. All right, you guys, you can go back to your seats. And as you go back, find a Bible and turn to Ephesians chapter 6. And everyone else that had the pleasure of sitting down and not getting up front in front of everyone, uh, let's turn to Ephesians chapter 6 this morning. Ephesians chapter 6. And uh, you can remain seated. We are going to read the first nine verses from Ephesians chapter 6. Now, we talked last week about a very fun subject of husbands and wives. And we we introduced the subject of clarity at home clarity at home. So we're going to continue with that subject of receiving clarity at home, and we'll look at Ephesians 6, verses 1 through 9. The Apostle Paul's continuing writing this letter to the church in Ephesus, and this is what he writes. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with a promise that it may go well with you and that you may live long in the land. Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. Verse 5, bond servants... Obey your earthly masters with fear and trembling, with a sincere heart as you would Christ. Not by the way of eye service as people pleasers, but as bond servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart, rendering service with a good will as to the Lord and not to man, Knowing that whatever good anyone does, this he will receive back from the Lord, whether he is a bond servant or free. Masters, do the same to them and stop your threatening, knowing that he who is both their master and yours is in heaven and that there is no partiality with him. Let's stop here for today. Now, we've been going through this Ephesian letter ever since February. I think it was the last Sunday in February. And the last Sunday in February, we begin in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 1. And we've been reading verse by verse every single Sunday. 
And uh, well, let me take that back. Not every single Sunday, because we had Easter. I think we even went through Ephesians on Easter. Sorry, I didn't write that down in my notes. All right, let's get back. I'm on a rabbit trail. Uh, So we learned in Ephesians chapters 1, 2, and 3 that that is the first section of Ephesians. And it is a very deep passage of verses. Talks a lot about our standing with God, our position with God. And we learned that we have been saved by grace. It's God's grace through faith. That if you're a Christian, that it's not because of your works, but it's because of the work of God through Jesus Christ and our faith in Him. So now that we are Christians, if your faith is in Christ, in His life, death, and resurrection, uh, we've been learning in chapters 4, 5, and now 6 that ways we should live. We've been learning how we should live. We've been learning how we should talk. We've learned how we should treat others. We've learned that we should speak truthful words. And as we've read these chapters, many times we treat these verses, these books of the Bibles, Bible as they're for grown-ups. As they're for the, uh, as they're for the adults in the sanctuary. But Paul is speaking in Ephesians 6, starting in verse 1, and actually the whole of Ephesians, to a group of people who were gathered with with the Ephesian church. And he's giving clarity for the home. And in these first nine verses, we're going to see two ways, two ways that the gospel gives clarity at home. The gospel is the good news of the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. So we're going to see two ways that the gospel gives clarity at home. First, in verses 1 through 4, we see that the gospel gives clarity at home by giving important responsibilities to children and parents. What's the first word in in chapter 6? Someone shout it out. What's the first word in Ephesians 6 verse 1? Children. Think about that word. And in context or in light of all that we've read in Ephesians so far. Ephesians, again, this is a letter written by the Apostle Paul. This letter was given to the church. Ephesus as they gathered to worship God and this letter was to be read out loud to the people of God as they worshiped God and as Paul is writing this letter Paul is assuming that men will be in the house or wherever they are gathering at to hear this letter Paul is assuming that not only would men be there but women would be there Paul is understanding that husbands will be in the room. Paul understood that wives will be in the room. But Paul also knew children would be gathering together, would be assembled with the family of faith in Ephesus. So we know Paul wrote this letter. But we also know as Christians that the Bible is from God. The Bible is God's word for us. So this means that even God knew that children would be hearing his word. So if God instructed children, and if God purposely led Paul to instruct children, this must mean children and students are valuable to God and even valuable for the people of God as well, which we would call today the church. So Paul addresses children with these words. Ephesians 6, verse 1, look at it it again. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Let's stop here. What's the responsibility of children in this passage? Someone shout it out. Obey. Obedience. 
What's the word obey mean? Hmm. Obey means to listen and to do it right away. So if you're taking notes, obedience, to obey means to listen and to do it right away. So Paul makes it clear for children, listen to your parents and do what they say. And then Paul gives proof of this command, this instruction by God, by going all the way back to the Old Testament. And Paul goes back to the Ten Commandments, and he takes one of the Ten Commandments that has a promise with it. And Paul said, one of the Ten Commandments is to honor your father and mother. He writes in parentheses, this is the first commandment with a promise that it may go well with you and that you may live long in the land. So, for those children today who are living at home, one way you can honor your mother and father, your parents, your guardians, one way you can honor them is by obeying them. For those children who have perhaps moved out already, And you've moved out, you're no longer living under the same roof as your parents. Your clear path for you no longer comes from obedience towards your parents, but it comes in respecting your parents. So as you are honoring and as you are obeying your parents, Paul reminds us that this instruction comes, from, comes with a promise. He writes that it may go well with you and that you may live long in the land. Now children, students, I understand that you need help with this, right? You need help doing this. God understands this too. This is why it's very important, even for you as children and students, to pray. Ask God to help you with your responsibility, which is very important, to be obedient toward your parents. Ask God to help you to honor your father and your mother. You see, children, your responsibility is important in your home And it's because you are valuable to God, that he loves you enough that he's giving you clear instructions so that you can honor God by honoring and obeying your parents. But Paul doesn't stop with children, does he? He continues. Look at verse 4. Verse 4, Paul writes, fathers... Do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. Now, in this verse, Paul is challenging parents to raise your children with purpose. And Paul begins with instruction for parents. And I understand here that Paul is speaking directly to fathers here in Ephesians 6, 4. But when we look at the whole of Scripture, the entirety of Scripture, we see that mothers also play a significant, valuable, and vital role in the raising of children. Think of Proverbs. Proverbs chapters 1 through 9. Just the first nine chapters of Proverbs show us that mothers play a very significant role in raising their children. So we understand that both parents are to bring up or to raise up their children, but we also realize when we look at Ephesians 5, verses 22 through 33, that the husband, the father, is the head of the home. So Paul here is giving instruction to fathers and to all parents, raise your children with purpose. Now, if the gospel, and we know since the gospel, radically changes the way we live our lives, then Paul writes, don't treat your children in a way that causes them to become angry. But he said, bring them up. Raise them with purpose. And we learned what the purpose is 
as Paul continues, the purpose is the discipline, the instruction of the Lord. So even the good news of Jesus makes it clear for parents. Raise your children with a clear purpose that is centered on the Lord. So I've spoken to children, and I'm sure that some of the parents wanted to say, all right, children, listen, listen. But parents, listen. Do you have a clear vision for your children? Do you have a clear vision for your children? Now, this is similar to what I preached about last week with husbands and wives in that it's really difficult for me to give, to give examples of how to do this. You know, I can't give you a five-step formula, parents, to how to raise the perfect adult. It's not going to happen, okay? Each family is different. And for those of you who have children, multiple children in your home, you know each child is different. So for parents, it really comes down to this question. Are you being led by the Spirit in your home? So parents, ask yourself, are you being led by the Spirit as in the way that you parent and raise your children? Do you pray for your children? Do you pray for your children and how they obey and honor you? Do you pray for your own parenting? Do you pray for your spouse as they parent their, your child? Are you praying for your children to grow in knowledge of God and for God to lead you in teaching them? You see, raising children with purpose that's not easy in a culture and in society that's pulling you in all different directions, but the spirit that lives within you will lead and will guide you as parents as you surrender your plans and your child's plans to God's clear plan and direction for their lives. Let's continue. Paul continues in verses 5 through 9. This is the next point I want us to see in this section. So Paul's spoken to parents. He's spoken to children. Now we can summarize verses 5 through 9 with the second point. We see that the gospel brings clarity at home by transforming our attitude about authority. The gospel brings brings clarity at home by transforming our attitude about authority. Paul begins the next section with the word bond servants. And he now directs our attention in the church in Ephesus to those who are slaves. Now, slavery in ancient Rome was different than perhaps what we have in our mind today here in the United States. First off, a third of the Roman population, as Paul's writing this letter, were slaves. And slavery in ancient Rome was not based on race, but it was based on a number of things. One of the things that slavery was based on in ancient Rome was survival. In order to avoid starvation and in order to continue living, some people would voluntarily give up themselves to become a slave just so they could have food to eat and a place to sleep, a place to live. And then in other instances, uh, perhaps slavery was a result of military conquest. Military victory, where where the military would bring in others from other countries, and they would become slaves in Rome. And then, in turn, some slaves would become part of the family unit, a family unit. So, it was like they just became a part of the family in which they were involved, specifically here, as we're seeing in Ephesus. But before we go on, we must recognize All forms of slavery are wrong. That's where we say amen. All forms of slavery are wrong. 
Even in this passage, we see that Paul's finding it necessary to instruct masters, treat your bondservants well. So Paul doesn't skip over the issue, but Paul addresses the issue and shows how the gospel brings clarity. And Paul addresses bond servants first. And he instructs them, obey your earthly authority as you would obey Jesus. Now, let's t- kind of talk about the same subject as we talked about last week with wives in submission to your husbands. When we're talking about obedience to an earthly authority, the same applies to obedience as long as it does not conflict with God's word. When it comes in conflict with God's word, Acts 5.29 applies to your situation. Acts 5.29, Peter tells the authorities, we must obey, obey God rather than men. So then Paul addresses masters in verse 9 by instructing their earthly authority to treat their bond servants without threats, but to even submit to them. We learned in Ephesians 5.21 to submit to one another. So what Paul is saying here is to consider them even more important than yourselves. Now before we talk about application today, you know, here at First Baptist Carmi, here in White County, we need to understand that modern day slavery still exists. Modern day slavery still exists. The harsh treatment of women and children as they are sold into slavery, which we call today human trafficking, makes billions of dollars every year. I think the latest estimate is $150 billion every year in the United States and Europe alone. Africa, Asia Asia Pacific, these are also locations of the evils of modern day slavery. And in cases like this where ungodly and depraved treatment of others, where it continues to take place, we've learned in Ephesians And we learn throughout the whole of Scripture that the church should pray for the end of slavery. And we even have some that attend our church that uh, that are served in a variety of ways that help those who have been caught in slavery or help those recovering from the evils of slavery. So we understand that aspect. So then how do we apply it to us here, here who have gathered here today. One way we can apply this passage is that the gospel brings clarity to our attitude toward authority. So first, for those who are under authority, that could be at work, that could be at school, that could be at home, It could be local authorities. It could be within the church. It could be government authorities. The instruction we learn in this passage is to live in obedience as you would live in obedience to Jesus. And then Paul's instruction toward those who have authority. Perhaps you have an authority position, whether at work or at home or at school, maybe other leadership positions. Your instruction is to lead others with goodwill just as you would treat Jesus himself. And history shows us that this mindset that Paul is teaching in this passage, that God's word is teaching in this passage that not only the mindset, but the actions and the follow, by the followers of Jesus, as Paul is teaching this, eventually led to the abolition of slavery in the ancient slave system in Rome. So today, as we bring all of this to an end, this clarity at home, if you notice at the center of all of this, the center of our submission to one another, the, the, the center of the husband and wife relationship, 
the center of the relationship between children and parents. The relationship between parents and children. The relationship between those who are in authority. The center of it all is Jesus. Jesus is the center of those who were called saints all the way back in Ephesians chapter 1. Jesus brings clarity to the home. Jesus brings clarity to your marriage. Jesus brings clarity to your work. Jesus brings clarity to how you lead others. Jesus brings clarity to your school. Jesus brings clarity to your parenthood. Jesus brings clarity to all of life. And what I mean by saying that Jesus is the center of your life, what I mean by that is this, is that Jesus leads you. Jesus leads you in how you treat others. Jesus leads you in how you love others. Jesus leads you in how you submit to others, in how you lead others, in how you instruct others. And when Jesus is the center and you want to please him every day, then your life will look different than those who don't have Jesus as the center. But this is the clarity that our culture and our world needs today. So let me encourage our children. Since we started off the service with children, let me encourage you today to ask yourself this question. Are you obeying your parents like you would obey Jesus. Can I ask that again, children? I want you to think about last week. Are you obeying your parents like you would obey Jesus? If not, pray. Ask God to help you. Ask your parents for forgiveness. Ask God to help you to live in obedience towards your parents. Children, if you're not a Christian, let me encourage you today at lunchtime, talk to your parents, talk to your guardians, talk to them, ask them, how did you become a Christian? Hear them, hear how they became a Christian, and then ask them, what do I need to do to become a Christian? For those of you who are parents today, or maybe you're under authority in some way. Maybe it's at work or at school. Or maybe you have responsibilities where you are over someone. Maybe you are over in a leadership position. Can I ask you, is Jesus the center of your life? Parents, do you pray for your children? Parents... Do you pray for your children? Let's talk to grandparents. Grandparents, do you pray for your children and how they raise their children? I know you want to spoil those grandkids. But what's best for them is that they know Jesus. So do you pray for your, for your children as they raise your grandchildren? Do you walk alongside them in raising them in the instruction of the Lord. For those of you who lead others, you're in an authority position at work or at school or maybe even in the church, do you lead others, not mistreating them, but do you lead out of love and care for them? For those of you who have someone in a supervisory role over you, um, do you obey those who are in authority over you like you would do Jesus as the authority of your life? This is your challenge today, and this is your joy. So today during the invitation, make Jesus the center of your life and follow him. And if you're not a Christian, perhaps you're looking for clarity in your life. Maybe you're searching for clarity, but you keep coming up empty. Today, I want to point you to Jesus. Jesus came to this earth. He lived a perfect, sinless life. 
but He died on the cross. And He died as a payment for your sins. But on the third day, Jesus came back to life again. So today, during the invitation, you're going to be invited to place your faith and trust in His work so you can leave this place today with eternal life in a relationship with Jesus. Will you bow your head with me as we pray? Heavenly Father, I thank you, God, that you have given us this passage, that it's not a mistake, that the text that we read today is in the Bible. But God, I pray today that your Spirit will lead, that your Spirit will guide those who heard this message, whether it's children, whether it's parents, whether it's those who are in authority or those who are under authority. God, I pray that you will lead, that your spirit will guide. But God, I also pray that you will break our heart. And God, I pray that you will help us submit and surrender to how you are leading. If there's someone today who's not a Christian and they're searching for clarity in their life, God, I pray that you will make clear to them that your son Jesus is the way, the truth, he is the life. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. Church family, uh, let's stand as we sing this song of invitation. If you feel led to pray, you can come up here at the front and pray. Uh, I'll be over here at the side. If you'd like someone to pray with you, just let me know. I'd love to do that. Uh, let's stand and let's sing. What gift of grace is Jesus my Redeemer? There is no more for heaven now to give. He is my joy, my righteousness and freedom, my steadfast love, my deep and boundless peace. To this
church family. You may be seated. Did we have another verse on that song? We did, but we... Sorry. Fine. You want to keep doing it? You want to do it? No, it's you're fine. done. Okay, we're done. <laughs> Sorry, I interrupted. I like this song. That's fine. It is a good verse. All right. Time. Uh, hey, uh, again, thank you for joining us today. Uh, as you can see, look ahead. Uh, we will have prayer meeting tonight at 5.30. We're going to end a few minutes early tonight, uh, prayer meeting, because our very own Mike Crokin will be singing over at New Beginnings uh, Church of God. Uh, so that's tonight at 6.30. We're going to end prayer meeting around 5.15. Uh, so that way, if anyone wants to go and uh, support Mike and encourage him, uh, you're more than welcome to do that. Uh, you can see the rest of the announcements. Uh, the look ahead is something I'd like for my wife to come up and share with you what's going on. And, uh, and then we'll ask uh, Johnny Long after she's done to dismiss us in prayer. And I won't take too long so that Johnny Long can get up here. There you go. <laughs> Uh, yeah, he tells a lot of dad jokes at home, so we've all been doing a lot of puns recently. All right, so our women's ministry flourished this fall. Ladies, we want you to join us and flourish with us. We want us to grow together in the Lord, in his word, and to build one another up. And so we're planning to do this through small groups that meet throughout the week. And I even have something new for you. As you leave... This morning out this side, there are these little, they look like programs. I did, I made it into a little booklet. Isn't that nice? Uh, but it gives you all of the details. And our, our uh, we have five different groups that we're planning to be meeting this fall, Sundays or Saturdays through Wednesday. So hopefully there is a time that you, each one of you can find that will work into your schedule and you will join us every single week. Some groups will meet here at church. Some will meet at, in homes. We're still working out all of those details, but take a look at that. We would love for you to grow with us and grow together. There you go. All right. At this time, I will ask Johnny Long to come up and uh, dismiss us in prayer and, uh, God bless you. Come on, John. Father, we want to thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to be in your house, to be here to learn about you, to feel your love and your mercy and your salvation that you have provided for all of us. Father, as we go through this week, we ask that you protect us. We ask that you just guide us to be that son and that daughter that you will be proud of. And Father, we just ask that you continue to be with our friends and our family and those who are suffering father we ask that you just bring healing upon their life and if not lord we ask that you just give them that peace in their heart knowing that you are our god you're our savior and that we will be with you forever and father thank you for this hope that you have given us through your son jesus christ we ask all things in his name amen all right.